Hello and welcome to another Game Lord Tech Talk. Today our speaker is Adam Bean and I'm very proud to introduce him because he's a Java champion and this is a big honor in the Java society. And yeah, he will present the current status of JE6 and after that we will take a look at JE7 and then we will see if things become easier. So let's get started. So at the beginning. Thank you. Uh, I was asked to do it in English, so let's try that. Um, I was here in Berlin, I think, one year ago, and I hacked Twitter pizza or something similar. And this guy managed to implement everything with me. And after the talk, he came to me, he's like, a very little question. What was the question? It's like the formatting is not right on very many questions. And I just hacked everything uh, parallel with me. It was like parallel hacking, right? So everything worked, it was um, actually surprising. So, um, a little bit about Java 7. So how it works, I, would, I have 17 slides, which is, uh, which is incredible. And um, I created for you just to not to forget things. And I'm, I would really like to have questions asked. So um, if you have questions, just ask me, German or English, it doesn't matter. Um, so um, I, I will translate it for you. So uh, questions are very important. And yeah, let's start. Um, I'm actually a freelancer and I started with Java in 1995. And what's strange about me, I really still enjoy it. So I'm not looking for new challenges in Scala, Groovy or whatever, or Clojure. I'm just perfectly happy with uh, Java programming language. And even worse, I, I, I'm starting to forget the basics. So um, I think it is now time for me to relearn basics of Java because I spent all my time in Java 6. So um, I have to, I forget more and more things, or I probably I will have to re redo the programmer certification at some, it was the uh, or Oracle right now, it was there. <laughs> so, so in my, from my perspective, um, Java programming language really rocks, not only the platform, but the language as well. And the problem with that is you cannot write popular blog posts or books about this topic. Uh, to, to do something uh, popular, you will, you, will have, uh, you will have to bash on Java, but um, I couldn't get it. So um, what I see in my projects is not the fault of Java, it's the fault how Java is applied. So um, developers are implementing uh, Hello World applications with uh, 5 million frameworks and 3,000 interactions and then complaining about Java, say, okay, look, with Ruby, everything is linear. So okay, if you, if you put to Ruby, OSGI and DAOs and I don't know, value objects, it would be as crappy as Java is, right? So um, this is what I would like to show you, um, uh, what the future is right now, how it could lo looks like right now, and what would change in Java 7. It, 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 it won't change a lot, but something, yes? Yeah, just a comment, you can run Ruby on Java. Java Ruby? Yeah. Yes. So. The question is why? Java <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ruby, Groovy, Scala, everything runs on the, Java, on the Java platform. What I meant, the programming language is not as bad as it's said. So, for, for, um, and what I really appreciate in my project is, I see lots of, I would say, strange code. But with Java, even if it's strange, or superfluous, or whatever, you can still find out what happens. But, if you look on some Scala, uh, I would say, uh, Scala uh, DSLs, or Ruby DSLs, I think it is not always obvious what happens. And this is what I really appreciate in Java. It is really hard to obfuscate the code. And the other programming language is very easy to, uh, to write challenging code. And this is what I really appreciate. But I have to admit it is boring. More boring than writing you know, exciting DSLs than writing uh, something what the customer actually needs. So, <laughs> so um, just to exaggerate. So um, what I started to do, I just create um, a stuff. The idea was I traveled a lot for workshops in-house and on-site. Let's do it in uh, airport Munich. Uh, I call that air hacks. So one day workshop and uh, the problem was the room was not big enough and now I do it three times a year. So if you like to hack something with me, come to Munich. It will be on end of October. Workshops at mb.com. So this is a uh, older book, book, real world Java night hacks. It describes end-to-end -end Java application. And this is the cover is one day old, it's completely right of my rethinking best practices, everything is Java 6 inside. And this is a propeller of an airplane in the, um, in the workshop. So, 
If you like, buy the book. If not, there are lots of hacker sites, so you will, will be able to download it soon for free. So, um, um, yeah, this is from William Gibson, it's not from me. Uh, but this is very true. Future is now, it is not even evenly distributed yet. And uh, it is amazing what you can achieve with relatively old technology like Java 6 releases. So Java 6 is about, I would say, how old is it? One or even two years old. So actually ancient, if you if you consider it in the in the uh, in the web in the web timeline. So I would start with Java 6 Hello World. And what I usually do, I create some basic project, but I would like to do it in more real world. And more real world would be Maven 3. This is another huge discussion. So Maven 3 is a lot to, is too complicated. And from my perspective, it's the easiest possible thing you can do um, without exaggeration. If you start to configure Maven or write plugins, use something else, like for instance Gradle. And um, but in for my Java 6 projects, Maven is just good enough, but I just prohibit to over-configure it. Either you can live with the conventions or leave it. So if you have spe a specific tasks like integration of native code or whatever, uh, Maven is probably not the right choice for you because you will try to, to, uh, you know, to, violate, to violate the conventions. But uh, Gradle will be perfect, perfect choice. So to show you how it works, Junk is the right directory. Uh, there's a simple uh, wizard called um, uh, Maven Archetype Generate, and it downloads everything. This is actually the reason why I asked for internet. Then we can cut the line off, so I don't need it anymore. And what's, uh, what's nice here, it is a lot of uh, wizards. It's not so nice, but there are three useful projects, and it's around three... This is web app Java 6. This is what you need. And you can apply filters or search, command line, whatever. The, the number frequently changes because this is the, the main, main reason that you have to, to look up. Or just use the built-in wizards in Eclipse, NetBeans, or IntelliJ. Usually they rely on the same wizard. So I prefer to use the command line because then I'm absolutely 100% IDE independent, what I really appreciate. From my perspective, the build should be IDE independent. This is, this is very important. And right now, we started in Java 6 projects and there was lots of Eclipse dependencies, so we removed everything and now every, uh, everyone in the project can use whatever he prefers. She or he prefers. So, um, 398. So this is a strange question, always use the, the, the latest version. Uh, group ID is the com game dweller, I think. And artifact ID, no, tech top. Snapshot, I guess the uh, game dweller do something else than tech talks. It's not your main business, tech talks, right? So, um, <laughs> package com game dweller and the version success. And you see, TechTalk was created. So I can change the TechTalk uh, tech and say Maven Clean Install. And it will create a Java 6 project. And you will see in the target a work. So this is what I do in the first minute if I'm in my consulting work. So this year, about 20 times. Help us with, to set up a Java 6 project. Right now, everyone is amazed. Okay, I am able to. Now I can go, right? Because really, most of my projects look like that. Really. No exaggeration. Go to open source project, download whatever I did, always looks the same, which is a good thing. A little bit boring to show it 20 times a year, but I get paid for that, right? So, um, <laughs> sweet pain. So, so um, I use NetBeans, forget it, you can use whatever you want. So, if you have time, download Eclipse. Get very fast, downloading plugins a little bit longer. So I'm writing a project, there's one guy which job everything works, is constantly struggling with Maven plugins, WTP, and Glassfish plugin and Eclipse. This is his main task, so 10% Java 6, 90% Eclipse. This is um, not even Eclipse, Eclipse plugins. So, um, very exciting. 
But this is thing, I think this is not very widespread in Ruby community, right? Like someone downloads an editor and spends two weeks just setting it up. Yeah, of course, this is actually what I said. So I thought you were on the on the Ruby side. Oh. <laughs> Tech talk. So I open the Tech talk, Tech talk and run it. And ask me which server, there's only one, because I have the latest and greatest installed. And with a little bit of luck, should uh, create everything. Why luck? Because I worked in my real projects and in the airplane, I cleaned everything, but it seems to work. So what I do, I, I, what I did, I opened this guy with NetBeans. It's the same experience with IntelliJ. After installing all of the required plugins, similar experience in Eclipse. Um, uh, and, um, and after that, yeah, the app is deployable. So this was Hello World. So what happens behind the scenes? Not a lot. There's a simple Maven project and the, um, with one dependency to Java 6 API. And by the way, all my Java 6 projects are wars. Uh, what usually happens in the projects, they are starting, of course not as, as I started, because uh, they are also enterprise consultant. And what they do, they start with Maven Super Pom and Super Super Pom and the other Pom, and you will get uh, 500 Poms for one Hello World. The problem is, you cannot explain that. So I've asked why you are doing that. Uh, the, the, the common answer is, um, I would like to factor the dependencies, or which dependencies, you don't need anything. We have Java 6, so you will see one time we will need something, so okay? Then we could introduce that, right? One time, but not at the beginning of the project. So uh, point one, just start with very simple Maven, and then enhance it on the go. I never enhanced to a full-featured year. It was always war in the recent years. Okay, questions so far? No questions? Everyone agreed? Strange, strange guys. Guys. Everyone? This is really uh, unusual. Usually someone say, oh, okay, you are, you are, you are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can do. Um, I could do. The problem is I will have to restart Glass with JDK 1.7, and the problem on Mac with JDK 1.7 is uh, sometimes uh, NetBeans dies. Okay. But um, I actually I have kind of similar problems. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the problem is just UI. So what I did, you see, I'm running 1.7 always, and just for the presentation, I switched. Um, maybe edit. I switch to uh, I switch to JDK 1.6, and I would like to leave it. And it crashes frequently in the slower, and this is my experience. What would be your recommendation? Throw away the Mac and get on Linux? Yeah, for instance. So you could uh, throw away this this thing. It looks like doesn't even looks like developer machine, right? Yeah. Uh, but um, I have no experience with Linux. Uh, Linux I have uh, on the server right, uh, um, runs JDK 1.7 perfectly. So all my classic instances run, are running on JDK 1.7. The problem is the UI. It seems like uh, JDK 1.7 has some problems with Swing or AWT. So actually, I don't really need UI. Yeah, then it works perfectly with JDK 1.7. Okay, without UI is no problem. The only problem is uh, this UI, NetBeans, Eclipse, or for instance, uh, Visual VM. Perfect. Um, I forgot a gift. You would be, you would get one, right? So, um, question so far was great question. JDK 1.7 works perfectly, so, uh, except make, right? So, um, hello world, build. We covered build. It's already, I think, seventh slide. And essential architecture. So, what is the essential architecture? And what I find out recently, about four years ago, is um, what you can do. I have a tech talk component. And what I began to do is to structure my component with an old pattern called boundary, control, entity. And this, in, this thing is older than UML, and it fits perfectly to Java 6. 
And it was originally designed for model view controller to design the view. And uh, it's called robustness diagrams. And you can use um, entity boundary control in every, every application and every modeling tool. Even if you have something like the lightweight and beautiful rational developer modeler or what it is, um, even this guy is able to, to use the icons and magic draw and enterprise architect and even Visio, of course, Visio can use whatever you want. But um, no, what I appreciate first is it is uh, sorted the right way. All my own inventions before that weren't sorted right. So boundary is the entry point, controls are optional, and entities are domain objects. So it means a basic CRUD application in Java 6 comprises boundary with a single class, and I would say 1 to 10 entities. Nothing else. If you put something between, it means you started over engineering. Really? Because you can inject directly to a boundary the entity manager, and this guy is perfect. Right? Everyone still read? No. So, but Berlin is lightweight city, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I saw. Uh, Do you have a mic for him or something? You have to run. Try to speak loud. <laughs> no, you, you will be taped. Uh, some weeks ago, I saw a presentation where somebody described the uh, package by feature and not package by layer. So that means if you have uh, a new feature, you put uh, all the boundaries control in the sub package. Yes. Yes. This was probably my presentation, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, really. This is what I say. This pack talk is a generic. Gen this is a component. It's a business component, okay, and this is cohesive. And if you, this is not a feature. It's like, it's like root entity. If you were, I would say, an e-commerce shop you would have something like order is probably a very important entity and the component would get the name from the order. So we would have an order component. Yeah. It's another feature, it's more than a feature, it's like a set of features. And usually you started to modeling entities, whatever you're doing, I don't know, order has uh, order items and order items can be a book. And then from this, I start to develop uh, components. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, what you shouldn't do is the... Um, and what, what, what it means, usually I have, ah, this was not ex exactly right, I have here a, a, another package called business, for business layer, and then put this guy here, and then another package, presentation from the, for the UI. So in some projects I have here um, managed JSF beans, and in other, right now we use Vardin, uh, Vardin Windows exactly in the presentation. So everything is in one module, but it's clearly separate, separated by packages. Very good point. Questions so far? Actually, Vardin isn't Java EE. So actually, it's a GWT. It's not part of the Java EE spec. So it no, it isn't, except it runs in servants. Yeah, that's true. And it's not a, no, no, of course not. I mean, GWT is, but. It would be cool, it would be part of Java EE. No, it would, won't be, but uh, okay, just a hint. The next version of Vardin will be extremely well integrated with CDI and all Java 7. Look at my GitHub repo. I do. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, so, boundary. So, let's start with what we would like actually to develop. Tech talks, okay, um, of course. So then, tech talks resource. The tech talk resource <coughs> has a pass tech talks, needs some transactions. <coughs> so, okay. Why transactions? Because we need some kind of consistency. And what we already said, always the boundary is different set, actually. All, everything is routed through the boundary. So every method is transactional. If you push a button, you need a transaction. Something has to be consistent. The easiest possible choice right now is to just use it stateless. What stateless means, there is a convention, and the convention says everything is transactional. Every method is transactional. 
So, and what I see in my Java 6 projects, people are saying, no, 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 it's stateless, way too complicated. What we would do instead is, we implement our own extension. And this extension will start transactions for us. And we could apply our own transaction for everything, our annotation, and then it would be more lightweight than this guy really is. The question is why? Because it's stateless belongs to every Java 6 application server. So you cannot just cut it off. It is already there. Okay? So now we have to configure the rest of web services. And I will ignore NetBeans, like, okay, don't, I'm in the workshop and I would like to do everything by myself. So, and what, what, you, what you can do, you can configure the RESTful web services by yourself. I always call it REST config. And application path resources is the standard. Extends application, and this is the application from uh, WSRS RESTful web services. And we are about to be ready. String talks be a get request and for a Java programming language rocks. So Ruby's verse as well. Okay, so um, <laughs> and um, this guy produces media type. Come on. To explain, it means this guy has to be interpreted as string. So, with a little bit of luck, this is a maiden, I will just restart the project, or I just clean it. This is, I'm, usually it's not, not necessary, but we are now in a tech talk. So I'm a little bit nervous. So, tech talk, resources, tech, Talks, I think. So, and this was Hello World RESTful web service. From scratch, without any results. Yeah. Everyone excited? <laughs> I expected some crying, you know, clapping your hands like incredible and... Yeah, this was for me Hello World. It was um, what's um, interesting, the look at war, what actually deployed. So there is just the, um, the uh, POM and web in classes, you have just the classes, nothing else, two classes. No web XML, nothing. Okay, so why it's so important? The smaller the war, the faster it is. In my project, the faster deployment is. It's really important the size of the war because you will have to deploy over and over again and you lose lots of time, productivity time. So uh, deployment performance is in my projects crucial for, 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 uh, for uh, productivity. So I, everything, each external dependency is suspicious just because of productivity and later maintenance. Usually in phase one I just care about productivity and maintenance is nice because usually I get another contract. But, um, yeah, so boundary, tech talk is the entity, and tech talk has a title, um, yeah. Actually, I'll just try the chair here. This should be enough. And then say XML root element, JAXP, and XML standard accessor type field so that I can use the field. Um, no, I don't need get as a setup. So instead of that, I can just use tech talk. New tech talk. This doesn't have to work. Uh, 
but it works. And um, and this works as well. So this what you get usually for free. No one works with strings. Questions? Perfect. Do you have some uh, more gifts than a T-shirt for him? I don't know. Uh, so actually, currently we have kind of the same architecture. So we have a REST database, and we are using exactly what you do. So we can open it and other JSON. Mm -hmm. And what I currently want to do is, uh, I want that the service all only replies if the request is signed. So currently we have a problem. We have a service which uh, outputs all our all usernames. So you get all the information about all of our users when you input an email. Open architecture. Yeah, <laughs> great. But our customers, they say, hmm, perhaps this is a little bit too open. So mm -hmm. uh, what I want to do is I want to give our clients a certificate and they can sign the uh, request and then the, uh, uh, then the um, REST service should only respond if the uh, request is uh, verified. So if the request is signed within... Uh, Where you would like to put the sign, the certificate? Where you would like to put the certificate. So actually, I want to give. Uh, or actually, uh, in HTTP. I don't know. Use a header or a body or whatever. And can I just should I just do this or I'll let Okay. No, um, you can do this because um, you can inject the HTTP headers. You know that, right? Yes. So and you can expect whatever you want. So okay. whatever is possible in HTTP is possible right now. So what I said right now, what you can do. You can, I can say, okay, I would like to have the HTTP headers be injected. Yeah, it is a little bit. But you see, it was, was null. <laughs> uh, let's say... So, and you can send whatever you want. Okay, so actually, I think there is already specification in OAuth. So there yeah, is but OAuth is uh, supported in, uh, I think even in Jersey, but yeah, it's not a part, part of the spec. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So actually, signing is not part of REST because REST does not, is it, not able Important message, Chuck's REST right now in Java 6 is extremely powerful. So you can access headers, cookies, whatever you want. Uh, cache negotiation, languages, versioning, whatever you want. There are actually no limits. And JAXRS 2.0 is even better. So you, in JAXRS 2.0, there will be filters, and I think decorate or something, there are two concepts. So you can write a filter which cares about security, compression, decompression, whatever. Okay? okay? Uh, yes? What about the second media type, JSON? Where is the kind of response? This is XML, right? And this is JSON. Why? You are beginning to be boring. <laughs> Someone else? Yes, content negotiation. So uh, the browser says, I prefer XML over JSON. And from command line, there is no accept header because I have a curl, so it just uses the first one. So if there is no accept header, the uh, order matters. If there is uh, accept header, XML, you get XML. You get it? Yes, it actually even works. Again, XML. Okay, perfect question. Other questions? Okay. So it's the next point, oh, parallelization. That's, uh, I would show you. Are you interested in, in RESTful web services a bit? So how to speed up performance? The problem is, is, oh, XML and JSON, and we have Java clients on the other side, how to deal with that? And what is extremely easy, I would try to build it from scratch. We could use our own CLI. And I would call that binary, binary is also nice, binary. 
serializer and I think implements entity uh, message body writer. I think message body body writer of type I could use let's say serializable or everything. Why not? So and this has to be provider. Provider. So now it's registered the guy and what it does you have to implement this methods. I mean it's not that hard. Everything I don't know. And write to is like what I see in projects. Okay. And this is also important. This guy. And now I get here output stream. And um, I can convert everything I have I have in object output stream or use Hessian serializer or whatever you want, want to and you can greatly improve the performance by that. Okay, would you see whether it actually works? I have to think, write to is the, I think I, I started with the wrong one. Message for the reader would be the, I think, let's, no, it is actually the right one. Object output stream, OOS, new object output stream, Right, object, I think, right? This is the things I begin by, okay, yes? And now you are done. So, and I have to think, this is, I, this was some emotions. So, um, <laughs> producers, So this is my new MIME type. And I will use the MIME type here. I think I will have to rebuild everything because this is rather unusual task. But this is what actually where JAXRS shines. So you can use JSON and XML for HTML clients and native optimized uh, communication with Java clients, which is really great. And why not to use PDF, ICF, or all the micro formats for more targeted communication? Yeah, now you, you can ask something. Maybe. Is there any reason why not Uh, yes, because if you would expose something via RMI, there are multiple pro um, problems involved. First, uh, if you need an unicast remote object, which is a singleton, which wouldn't scale, and even though the RMI is reserved just for Java, it would be really hard to, to, to involve J jQuery or HTML or whatever. But I have nothing against RMI. If you say, I have just Java clients, go with RMI. The problem is, the chances are high that in the, in the near future, in the next few months, someone will, will become the idea to have a web client right now. This is, this is a problem. Yeah, this is another problem. Um, class class exception. Ah, cannot be, uh, but this is a very good sign, right? Um, so, um, I was never happy about an exception right now. So, CLI is disabled. And you see, it's a very nice format. And you can um, compress everything you know. To, to build the other other way around, you need entity body reader. I would skip that. Another two lines of code. Okay. Question so far? This was a nice trick and hack. Yes. Just mental compression could we just work this into a separate 
some Of course. Uh, not even, I would use Hessian serialization. Hessian is a nice protocol, and there's built in security and built in compression. Okay. Yes, but you are a Glassfish dependent. And this is Glassfish independent. So Glassfish is nice, I really like it, but who knows what happens in the next few years. So it should, uh, Jabo 7 is perfect. Tommy, extremely nice. Look up Tommy, you know what Tommy is? It's Tomcat on steroids, Tomcat with Java 6 capability. So Tomcat is the old bloated thing which consumes 3 megabytes of uh, space but uh, accepts 50 megs of wars. And Tommy needs probably 16 MB of, of RAM, but uh, expects 1 M megabyte of war. So because everything is deployed. So Tommy is very nice. So what we built out of the box is a custom JAXORES serializer. OK. Uh, about performance, JSON is fast, XML is slow, and this is a lot faster than everything else. This built in with, uh, and you can even throw. But Java serialization is the most is not the most efficient format. So what you could do, just implement externalizable instead of uh, serializable, and you can just um, compress it further. So this was just the simplest possible on-stage way to optimize JAXORS communication for Java clients. Other questions? No questions. So what is the next thing? Parallelization. Okay. Parallelization, so I have to build something which is parallel, parallel right? So um, let's say what we can do here in, in parallel, we could prepare slides. So this is an important thing. Even you have to create 17 of them. And um, let's say prepare slide and number. And this is slow. So, first of all, I can inject this guy here. With add inject. The question um, uh, often asked, what is the difference between add inject and add EGB? And the answer is, you can usually live with add inject, but the problem is inject is uh, simplistic. So if you look at that, there is nothing inside. But usually you have probably to access an EGB from different year or whatever. Then if you inject this guy with add EGB, um, so you can provide map name, JNDI name, and some more things. Usually, in all my Java 6 projects, I always use add inject. So, and there is also a subtle difference. Add inject um, cannot deal with circular dependencies, and that DGB can. Okay. Question. So, and what I always do wrong in my projects, and always do right in events, is I always forget the Beans XML, this guy. If you forget this guy, this is a huge deployment descriptor, looks like that. And actually, we could even simplify that, but let's leave it. And um, and uh, without that, add eject won't work. You will get null point exception. So I, sp I, I think I already burned about 10 hours of my life just to searching for this, really. Except all my talks never happened on stage, but always in my projects. So, um, yeah. Why not Java What? Like, can we do this in Java? No, currently not, but in Java 7. Because Bins XML can be used uh, through an API. This is what they are thinking about. But this is not a big deal. You spend once 10 hours and then you know that. <laughs> um, prepare slides. So, um, prepare. It takes longer than one second, but just for demo purposes. And I will just to invoke this guy here. Uh, 70. And what you will see is it takes one second. The blue bar is about one second. You see that? 
If not, I can increase to 10 seconds, but we have no time, right? So, um, how to paralyze that? And this is, I saw, you know, adventurous uh, solutions in Java 6. I could, of course, build my thread pool. This was the, 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 the first one. Or at least uh, someone knows executor service from Java 6. This is a little bit better. But the best solution is to use the extremely complicated EJB. And now the question is, what do you think the name of the annotation is? Okay. Right now, it's asynchronous. This was the first first possibility for asynchronous execution of something. Only possible is EGB 3.1. Questions? No questions? Oh. Can I downgrade the priority of the asynchronous thread pools? Not with a standard in the standard way. Okay. But what I but what I proposed in EGB 3.2. What I would like to have is um, max pool size or something like this. Because otherwise, <laughs> someone could hack the server. It would just start 5 million threads, and it would just, the threads wouldn't be pulled, but created, the server would die. So, your task is right now, not right now after this, just to support me and say, okay, it's very important. So, then it will come to Java 7. So, the way where I have to do that? Uh, there is a GP31 spec, okay. and there's a Jira. It's just wood. You would find me, a bean, and, and then just say, okay, everything he says is right, so do it. And you can vote, or I will be Michael's fan. If I press him to No, 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 it just, just say, okay, it is important to have, um, I don't know, manage or something. Yeah. Okay, this. Yeah. Always educated votes, otherwise it would be really hard to spam, I guess. So, but this is a little bit boring, right? So, um, let's say I will have to create multiple PowerPoints at the same time. This is what I usually do, uh, PowerPoint generator. So, um, what you can do, I can return a future with the content. And let's say, prepare. So, and now let's go crazy. What we could do, we could create in parallel, let's say, 10 talks. Why not? 10. And I will just use here the E. And what I will get back is a future. The slides. So then I would create a list of future of strings. The syntax may be in Ruby some, somehow nicer in this case. But um, can you use list and then just it? Yes. You're right. Uh, future and list results. Hmm. What do you, what do you suppose, right? Um, why not change style? Why not change to Java set? No, it uh, forgot to uh, to import as I forgot to push a push a button. And uh, now, results and slides. And now, I iterate over this guy and get the result back. So, how long will it take? With JDK 1.7, it will be multi-catch, but 
I have to one six. Okay. How long? Yes. So you are a pro hacker. What is he? A little more. You saw a little more. It was a little longer than, than before. Um, then you see, got the result. Everything is prepared. So the nice story is what I'm doing right now is I parallelize all the stuff here. It starts ten threads in parallel, and I am able to receive the, the the results here. And the nice story is I know when everything is done. No. Um, so there is no explicit uh, support for uh, for for MapReduce, of course. What you saw already is this. What I what I built. I built a simple connector, which is Apache license. It's very simple, and you can use that to execute runables, and this match. So you can say, I don't know, 10 threads or 5 threads is managed through the admin console. So we use it in projects right now. Um, so if you, this is, JCA implementation, by the way, takes four classes. It was a matter of three hours, not three days. This is really, really easy. So it is very good implementation. Connectors. Adam So if you go to Adam you will find a project or GitHub. I don't mean connectors with Z. Why with Z? I like it more small cool than this. And as you see, the Z is even, you know, capital Z. So, then, GMS for ages. If you wanted to distribute something, just use GMS. And uh, nothing prevents you to write a JCA connector which interacts with Hadoop or GPU or whatever. We built a connector which interacts with robots. So, welding robots. So, um, sockets. So, it should be, it is very easy. And by the way, I'm thinking about integrated NoSQL databases via connector because the main, uh, the main, the main benefit using JCA connectors is you will be get notified about transactions. So uh, if you implement local transaction, begin, commit, and rollback will be invoked in your code, and you can then flush the changes to NoSQL or, or write through a socket. So you can implement something like transaction of high store or transaction NoSQL or transaction whatever. Okay? Still the code is connectors. I implemented two connectors. The first one starts threads, and the second one writes transactional files. Okay, questions so far? Is it okay for you? Yeah. The next question is about uh, load balancing. Uh, because uh, usual is to see uh, HTTP load balancing. What is the other types, for example, when a um, batch process has millions of tasks and has to distribute this about two, three nodes in, in, in clusters. Okay, so a different, uh, this is interesting, I think, for all of you. This is no more hello world, but a little bit advanced question. So, um, remote EGBs do it for ages. So, all application servers now rely, if you have remote interface to an EGB, it is load balanced because of smart stuffs. I wouldn't rely on that. So, the uh, second po uh, po uh, possibility is to use GMS. All application servers I know provide load balancing for GMS. So Glassfish does that in three different ways. JBoss with Fornet Q does it, and 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 and, and uh, WebSphere and, and WebLogic as well. So you get it for free. I would rely on HTTP load balancing because it is application server independent, and you can implement shared nothing architecture. So you could build an application server which is self-contained and does nothing about the other guys, and the load balancer like. I think there's one JBoss project which is really called Load Balancer or something. Search for Load Balancer and, and JBoss, which can be instrumented from outside and say and, and distribute the load. So having an HTTP, 
Mod clusters. Yeah. Mod clusters is from isn't it from, isn't it from Apache? Yeah, it's a project. Okay. Apache. But this is the uh, JBoss specific load balancer, which which with a dedicated API, right? Yeah. Yeah. So having relying on HTTP is not a bad idea. <laughs> and I would be try as as far as possible application server independent. It was always trouble before using application server specific features. Okay, very good question. Other questions? No questions? So then we have to talk about uh, prioritization. No? So then for some use cases, I have to say this approach is useless. And why is that? Because you are MQing the tasks to a transient queue. If the server dies before transactions, everything is gone. So this is the case where you either would rely on JMS, Java Messaging Service, or just a nice quick hack. Use a timer service, one single action, with one millisecond. And the interesting story is, if you do that, the timer will be, will be stored in a database and then retried persistently. OK? If you don't know what I'm talking about, you don't have the problem right now, right? So, <laughs> that's, so, and timer, how a timer looks like is um, yeah, it's a class with a scheduler notation. Um, simple timer. So, um, very important stuff because you can usually kill quartz with that. Mm, I'll call it repeat me. On timeout. So and now you have cron expression. So you can specify whatever you want. You can say um, every hour. This is actually basic, but you can, what you can also do, you can implement a configurable timer. So this is, yeah, it's, uh, this is uh, one which, is, which has to be redeployed if you change the settings. You can inject the timer service and configure, configure timers at runtime. Minute and second. It's like this. And I think I will have to redeploy everything in a minute. Yes. Questions so far? This was a very simple timer. Important to know, it's useful for different tasks. I use it for, for instance, in the recent projects we used for delayed deployment. There is some heavy task, and we use one single action timer which uh, just delayed the execution of something until the whole system was deployed. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, depends whether try uh, my time a yes. If you if you put um, you see it works. If you if you specify persistent false, it won't. So persistent false is JVM bound. Persistent is database bound. If you have a central database, all the timers are going to be stored in a central database, and one timer will be fired in one instance. And this is going to be clarified in EGB 3.2. It's already right now the case, but it's not mentioned. Uh, in the spec, but it, it is the, the way the, the the case, and it will it is, will be cl cl uh, clarified in Java 7. You see, beautiful output, right? So we can just um, comment it out because. One question: uh, was already available in EGB 3.0, right? Yeah, uh, EGB 3.0 is, is very long. Uh, EGB 3.0 or 3.1, I. Right? Is it you to always Java five? Yeah. This is almost museum technology. You know, I I I really I'm using Java six. I I, I think so. I, I forgot it. I guess so. Doesn't know someone? It's scheduled it was in Java five. This was Glassfish v two. In Glassfish, that's a scheduled working Glassfish v two. I don't know anymore. Or, or Java was five. 
Okay, I, I have no idea. In Java 6, this is Java 6. And I always have this fact from Java 6. I don't have them anymore, I think, from Java 5. So I can, cannot even look it up right now. So, questions? No, never. It will never be because it's possible to build a robust uh, cluster wide singleton because of CAP, consistency, availability, partition tolerance. Either it will be scalable or consistent, never both. Okay, questions? Okay, no questions. Then the next slide parallelization, injection tricks. Okay, injection tricks. Let's say. TechTalks resource, I would like to configure this guy here. So, Java programming language rocks. This is the most common question. Even someone mentioned Java configuration. So I just usually, yeah, so how to do it in Java, in, uh, in Java 6, sorry. And you will have to build it by, by yourself. So I will create a message. Oh, there should be a field, wait a minute. Field message string message and I would like to have it configured from outside. This is my my idea right now. So and the best thing you can do is just inject the guy. And now you get a beautiful exception that says basically unsatisfied dependencies, what means no one is able to provide the value for the message. So this is what I'm hacking it just for you, because of Java, Java config. So um, what I usually would do in my projects, I would create another component with the name um, or configuration, configurator, and a component configuration. And this guy is able to produce ah, completely wrong a string and this is Maven so I will have to redeploy that if it takes too long I would uh, suggest you the, um, there is um, JRebel from zero turnaround it's a nice tool, a class loader, which simplifies it, uh, speeds up the deployment. And there, there is also, I guess the name is Evolution VM. It's an open source uh, substitute of Jericho. So you should try both. Um, ah, no. I have to use now. Resources, tech talks. The odd one didn't recognize the changes, but it works. What I what I did, I just did, didn't recognize the last the, the recent change. But you could use something like this. Now you are able to configure one string globally. This uh, relies on the attribute name. Yeah. Oh, it works. Configure. Pardon? This one uh, relies on the attribute name. No. No, on the type. So it means translated. To real world, absolutely useless this approach, because you can only configure one string at a time. Globally. <laughs> so I will just make it more useful. Public string get string. And just return configured, but what you can do, you get the metadata of the injection point. And then, and I can just say, give me the member, get the current class, <coughs> and IP get member. I think the name. Is. 
And this is unique, right? And now you only need a property file or table with two, with two columns and you can configure whatever you want, even in real time. So, configured, text box, message. So I have the information where the string is injected. With one class, one method. I think this covers the whole configuration issue from the guy, right? You are perfectly happy, and, or more than happy, please, right? Okay. Questions? So, now what you can do, you can create your own annotation, and you can even provide stage-dependent configuration, whatever you want. You can rely on naming, for instance, or you can override the naming with your own annotation. We could do it in about two minutes if you like, but this would be just basic Java SE programming. Okay? This was the first hack. Injection hack. The second one. Questions? I didn't see, uh, when I uh, want to have several strings, uh, would I uh, different this with producers and some um, uh, to specify what string I No. It's a nice story, yes. I am different. Right? Uh, what is actually the output? Message plus plus I am different. Plus headers. I am different. So what you get in the configurator, the fully qualified name of the field, and then you can use it for configuration. So you are done. So we could create an, a JPA entity with key and value and store it in the database, and we would have, with additional two lines of code, uh, database back configuration. Pardon? It's conventional configuration. What you could do, as I said, in, in, um, implement an annotation that say configurable or configured or whatever, okay. and uh, then override the name if you like. Which has to yeah, be unique. Yeah. This, but this would be additional line of code. That, you see? that looks like a string resource. Probably, yeah. Okay. Or you can write your own extension, in whatever. So, but agreed. This would be configuration. Everything else is basic Java programming. So just, I just, I didn't want it to, to show you this because it's more or less basics, but you asked for that, so you saw how to configure everything with Java. So, um, let's say I would like to have a specific configurator. And this guy inherits from the configurator. And I would override the method get string, and this guy produces the string, and then I get a beautiful exception. The exception says ambiguous dependencies. The problem is now we have two configurators, the generic one and the specific one. And, but there is a very nice annotation called specializes. And now, I will have to redeploy that because of Maven. <coughs> um, what was it? Take talk. It works, but what I actually wanted to do is to say Hard coded. Did you recognize the change? So, um, and this is really nice, it's like a template pattern in Gengo 4. What you can do, you can deploy your application with standard behavior, and just only by deploying specific implementation of the template, you can extend the behavior. 
Got it? This was what we did actually project, not with configurator, but with others. Hard coded, hard coded. Okay, and just imagine you have a jar, your framework jar, it's a signed. You cannot change that. Then you just put another jar to the wall with the extensions. Okay? Let's see what the next slide is, actually. I injection to it still, but the next. Oh, rest of the optimization, we covered it already. Uh, modularization, rest of optimization, modularization, configuration, we covered clouds. Okay, this clouds is, we have some. So, future. Um, questions about that? So, would like to, uh, um, to see how to implement plugins with Java 6. Yes? Okay, someone else? Oh, what it can do? I think we have about one hour still, or half an hour or something, so what you would like to see? We can... Okay. Nice. Let's think... Take it as resource. Then we need an interface and two implementations or something. Let's say formatting is a very important task. So, slide formatter. So we need a component. Formatting. Formatter. And this is a control. And by the way, Actually, an interface, of course. And by the way, interfaces are there in Java 6. But what we, we implemented, if you don't need plugins, you don't have interfaces. So there is no reason to use interface in Java 6. And what I did in all my migration from Java 5 to Java 6, I deleted all the interfaces. It was a major fight with the architects because uh, they somehow liked them. Um, I, I guess with, because they invested heavily in JDK 1.1 frame in a course and they learned about interfaces. But really, what is absolutely forbidden in my projects is a naming like impl. Formata and formata impl. This is a poison, this is incredible, and I don't know any reason why someone would you like to do that. Before that, probably, or bean is even worse. So Java 5, bean and local. So this is the same, the same you know, strange story. So whether impl or bean, Anything which is technical should be removed. So interface should work just by naming after responsibilities. If you get a name clash, you don't need the interface. So but then I get responses from architects. What happens in the future? Everything is hard-coded. So, okay, how long would it take to introduce an interface afterwards with a modern IDE? Of course, if you are working with VI, another story. Even Vim won't help you. But let's say you get Eclipse, IntelliJ, or NetBeans, right? So then it's a matter of five minutes. So, then, of course, I would create format the input because I have no reason to do that, just because of you. <laughs> Implements, formatter, and this is my formatter. So, and there is an, now let's say, I don't like this format input, I uh, really, uh, this is a format, uh, uh, the, 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 um, beautiful, as what I want, nice, nice one, and um, an ugly picture. This would be like, Was said, I don't spend enough time for formatting my slides, so it's okay, it's true. So, um, formatter, two implementations, and now I try to inject this guy to take the resource. So, if I try that, format, 
care with add inject. Save that. I get a beautiful exception that says answer uh, ambiguous. Uh, ambiguous, of course. Ambiguous uh, dependency error are two implementations in one interface. With one, it would work. Okay, by the way, if you would like to make it configurable at deploy time, I could say, where is the my formatter here in formatting? I would say this guy is an alternative. And this would deactivate the guy. ambiguous and I have to really to clean it so and um, this would work but this is not a plugin it's just possibility to show you how to deactivate ambiguous references and you could reactivate them in bin 6 if you like so it works obviously but um, I would just say okay no I would like to have to provide formatters on the fly not on the fly on each deployment time so I have a core slide factory and I would like to build to, to buy plugins like in Eclipse case, and just put the jars to my wall, and it should work out of the box. So, um, how it works is relatively simple. Instance of formatter, and then I can iterate over formatter. And now you have your plugin. Resources, tech talks. <laughs> found, ugly. And the other isn't found. Ah, oh, it is disabled. Thank you very much. So, clean and build. Ugly. Okay, let's do it again. Ugly and nice. Nothing less than a plugin. There will be no formatter, no exception. This is a formatter that will be found, discovered. It only has to be in a class file. In a jar with bin6ml inside. Okay? So there's another possibility to build extension points. So the template method and plugin method. Questions? Very good. Is it also possible to provide new formats on runtime? Uh, yes, but it is not supported by the spec. So Glassfish is able to do that, JBoss and WebLogic every time server. Glassfish is uh, OSGI runtime, basically. So you can do whatever OSGI is able to do. I never did it in production. Why? It's just not necessary. If you... I just no, no, but what, uh, in production, what I would like to do, I would shut down the whole Glassfish instance, or even shut down the whole operating system. It's virtualized, and you have a load balancer up front, just you know, redeploy it, and this would be my approach to it. Just keep it simple. No tricks. The problem with that is the class loading in Java is not as clean as it seems. And having an, 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 an class leak in production could have side effects, and this is just too hot for serious applications. Is it compatible with the Java services? Yes, or service loader. Yeah, I mean, yes, I use service loader in Java 5, and in Java 6 you can just use that. Mm -hmm. It is uh, more powerful even, because what you can do um, I can go here and say, give me all formatters with annotation, subtypes, whatever, so you can filter them. And I can also ask formatter, are you ambiguous or is, are you unsatisfied? So there's a lot, far more um, um, powerful than service loader and there is no manifest needed. So there is nothing to do, no services needed. So, we covered plugins. I will probably check in everything to one of my repositories as a zip, and you can download everything without, without uh, an a, a account. So I will do it today, 
and post Twitter links so you can download with one click everything from Twitter if you like. Uh, so let's see what's on my slides. Future, so we then clouds. Okay, clouds configuration, so configuration and what's about clouds? So interestingly, clouds are actually going very strong. So there is a Gelastic, uh, and there is an uh, Oracle cloud services, and there is uh, OpenShift. And um, Java 7 will be a little bit cloudy. Um, usually, I'm not, I'm not that excited about clouds. In, in my opinion, clouds is something like um, a service on demand with a nice API. But what's more interesting is, if Java 7 becomes more cloud-enabled, it also becomes more CI-enabled. Because what you would like to do, you would like to control the deployment via an API, for instance. And what Java 7 will have is a more annotation and XML-driven configuration for resources. So even right now in Java 6, there is one annotation at a data source definition, and you can use that to on-the-fly deploy uh, connection pools. This is what I did in my open source project because I would like to deploy the war and don't fiddle with the admin console. And this would be even extended in Java 7 with um, GMS resources, JCS, whatever you want. This was a standardized way to deploy with the applications all the resources needed. And I'm really excited about that because think about we have Jenkins or Hudson running and you just put the war and everything is deployed, right? So it's, um, th this is actually a direction. Also multi-tenancy, so what will happen is the um, JPA will be multi-tenant aware, so it, uh, you can have, um, what, what will actually happen, the queries will be extended with, uh, with the tenant ID. Um, JAX arrays will be more standardized and more powerful with filters for security, for instance, compression, and we will get a client-side client, a client-side client, client, client -side implementation of JAX arrays, which is standardized. Right now I have to use Jersey or REST Easy. In Java 7 there will be one API which comes with Java EE 7. Um, then concurrency and utilities on entire new spec, how to plug in thread pools uh, will be part of Java 7. Um, so what's what's else? GMS. Batch API. I don't know the status about this, about batch API, but there was in the in the something something in the works about uh, social is dead. So there was a social API, it it, it was killed. We are not social, this was the reason for it. So, um, and, um, and JMS will more and look like CDI events. Uh, it means you can just, um, there is a JMS context and you can send a JMS text message with one method without the, all the injection session context and session acknowledge, just sending events. Okay? Java 7, Java EE 7. Um, JDK 1.7 okay. is, is an old thing. <laughs> I, I actually forgot what, about the release date, but I think this year or early next year, Java 7. So I will have to look it up. This is actually uh, strange that I don't know that, but um, it has to be about... It was, I think, aligned with JDK 1.8, and I forgot where JDK 1.8 is about to, to be released. But uh, yeah, I don't know it reliably. Please. Okay, so, um, and how Java 7 is developed is also probably interesting. Um, everything what happens in Java 7, since Oracle is now driving the spec, is open. So all the expert group member lists are open, so you can just go and see what happens. And why is it so exciting? Because if you know what will come with Java 7 this or next year, you can already align your architecture with that, and you have something like a future-proof architecture. You know what happens in the future. And this is actually a unique, unique advantage. So you spend a few hours just to look at how GMS would look like, how CDI events would look like, or whatever, and you can learn about the future. And this is unique. I don't know any other framework which is so open as Java 7, actually. And the nice story is there is no ivory tower. Ivory tower is Elfen by Tum. And um, so what it means, all except us as freelancers are actually implementing the service. So the core hackers from Eclipse, core hackers from Hibernate, core hackers from Cache, Greg Lark from EH Cache. The Greg Lark from EH Cache is a spec leak of Jcache, which comes in Java 7, cache, caching API. So it means I don't know anyone who's just dreaming about specs and interfaces, they're all implementers. 
This is why we have so hard time, because if I propose something, so okay, you don't implement anything, yeah, what, do you, what do you like to just implement first and then ask, you know? Um, so, um, so the perception that there is an ivory tower in Java 7, I, I never saw that, you know? So it was probably 15 years ago or something, but there was no JCP 15 years ago. So I guess probably CMP 1.0 uh, in 1998 was de developed that way, but I don't even know about that. So this is very open process, and since Oracle driving this pack, either something is open or completely closed, so in between it's impossible. So it is, goes that way, if I post something to a, to a private list, it will be reposted publicly. So the, the spec, it says, okay, everything has to be open. You cannot just send us messages uh, privately. And uh, so far, I know that private lists are only needed for conference calls and stuff like that. So, instead of criticizing, you could just participate. So if you have, uh, you know, ideas, just write emails, really. So you can change the world or improve the world at least. And this is why I'm uh, start writing a blog post, um, Java 6 sucks or Java 7. I write emails and, uh, to, to the expert group members and try to a little bit to, to contribute something, which is extremely possible. I think if you have a good idea, the chances are more than 50% that it will come through. This is um, what I can tell you. So, um, yeah. Any questions? I could hack something for you, CDI events or whatever. So, um, if you like, we can go with that. If not, I think we have already two, almost two hours, right? I, I have no idea we have. <laughs> so, what I should do? Some, hack something? Yeah. So what? <laughs> CDI events, you know how they look like? It's extremely simple, but probably interesting for you. Okay, an event. Let's say we would like, this will not have the idea of the event. <laughs> um, business submission or proposal. Because the events are nice because uh, GMS 2.0 will, will look like this, what I show you right now. And uh, CDI events are local, GMS will be distributed, so it could be interesting. And I would like how it's called, uh, conference chair, I think it's the right name. And this guy is inter interested in content. Just in content. So it observes content. So this guy is done. And what I can do is I could inject an event. <coughs> of type string. And send it oh. here. Already work. Content hard coded. This were CDI events. So how it works? This guy is interested in a string. It's only interested in the type. It is type bound, and it receives everything, which is all string events. And I'm sending strings here. And this is why it works. So, if I would like to have a more specific channels, like uh, topics or queues, I would introduce qualifier, just annotation, and would annotate the event with an annotation, and observes with an annotation. Okay? So, we just 
basic annotation.